While Danica Patrick was the most well-known female NASCAR driver of the early 2010s, during this era, Johanna Long was without a doubt the most underrated. While her father Donald continued racing late models, she began her racing career driving in karts at just the age of 5. She progressed to Legends cars by the age of 8, and by the time she's 12, she's already racing in late models. In 2008, she won the Gulf Coast Championship, which included races at Pensacola and in Mobile, Alabama, as well as the late model truck championship at Five Flags Speedway. By 2009, she was beginning to transition over to the world of NASCAR, competing in multiple series which included ARCA, ASA, and the Pro Late Model Series, capping it all off by starting on the pole in that season's Snowball Derby. While she continued to race late models in 2010, the world of NASCAR eventually came calling. Johanna Long makes her career debut tonight as well, Ray, starting in the 15th position. She too has came up through the ranks, driving late models. Tonight she's driving for Billy Blue Motorsports in hopes that she can impress NASCAR and be qualified to run in both Nashville and New Hampshire later this season. And if you look at the hood, you see Riley Children's Hospitals there. She is proud to be supporting that local organization racing here tonight at ORP. She was able to make some select starts during the 2010 Camping World Truck Series season, but not just for any team. This was for Billy Baloo Motorsports, an established Truck Series team that had won multiple races with the likes of Kyle Busch and Eric Amarola. Her Truck Series debut ended with a 17th place finish, but come her second start at Nashville, she was completely taken out by former F1 driver Noreen Kartikanian. After three starts for Billy Ballou, she spent her final four starts of 2010 in the truck series driving for her father. Donald Long put up some funding of his own and they were able to make some select truck series starts to end the season. The most memorable start from that season was at Texas where she qualified an impressive ninth, her first ever top 10 start at the age of 18. Watch Johnny Sauter just drive away from her. Now there's Ricky Carmichael right behind her. Looked like maybe she missed a shift or didn't get a clean shift there and maybe started her problems. Ricky definitely made some contact with the left side. Oh, of the look, the tire's flat. She had a flat left rear tire. You're exactly right from the contact with Ricky Carmichael. And then the thing just gets away from her. She probably didn't know. She hadn't, doesn't have a whole lot of experience. Looks like she's real, still trying to be on the gas right there. She probably didn't realize that tire was flat, Phil. Yeah. You know, she comes from short track late model racing and has only done this a few times, and she just knew she was loose. She just didn't, didn't know why. Unfortunately, the end result was a 36th place finish and already out of the race by lap one. But the point is, being able to qualify that truck inside the top 10 at a mile and a half where she has had limited experience is mighty impressive. But it wouldn't be nearly as impressive as what she was about to accomplish in the 2010 Snowball Derby. Landed Castle to the lead, Long the second place. I was leading when we took the white flag and, uh, and Johanna spun me out. Can she get around Castle? She puts a bumper, she turns him. White flag in the air, final lap. One to go. Through three and four. She's pulling away, she's pulling away, she's pulling away out of Pensacola, Florida. Joan Hannah Long wins the Snowball Derby. Her win in the 43rd annual Snowball Derby made her the second woman to win the race since Tammy Jo Kirk did it in 1994. This obviously got a lot of attention in the motorsports world and especially in NASCAR circles. But yet, she still didn't score any major offers for Megabuck teams so she was still planning to run the 2011 Truck Series season with her family-owned team. Johanna Long getting advice from her crew chief, Kevin Cowboy Starlin, as we speak. Johanna Long, the youngest competitor in this field, but she already has a big victory to her name. She won the Snowball Derby just a, over two months ago. She is on her way, and Kevin Cowboy Starlin told her to remember that this track is no different, and listen to this, than her home track, Five Legs Speedway in Pensacola. Okay, it's a little different, Phil. It was looking very promising at first. She was able to qualify that truck inside the top five, but unfortunately was caught up in the big one. And really, that's her 2011 Truck Series season in a nutshell. It was pretty evident that she had the talent to run up front, but was obvious that she clearly didn't have the equipment. You have to give it to Donald Long for at least trying to fund his own daughter's team, but at the end of the day, compared to the Megabuck teams, they were clearly outmatched. However, at the same time, at just the age of 19, Johanna Long was showing flashes of potential. Our leader right there. In front of this field, that's the 20 of Johanna Long. 
those were the first laps she's ever led. We ran 17 races. I was going to be it. If we can find something where I can take what I was going to spend and pool it to where we can get her a better opportunity in the Nationwide Series, and I was all for it. Her 17 Truck Series starts in 2011 resulted in zero top tens with an average finish of 23.6. Her season highlights include leading a couple of laps at Dover and flirting with a top 10 finish at the fall race at Texas, resulting in an 11th place finish. But as her father stated in that interview clip, he was looking for opportunities to move up to the Nationwide Nationwide Series. Once 2012 rolled around, Johanna Long found herself in the Nationwide Series driving in a partial schedule for ML Motorsports. This certainly wasn't a megabuck team, but definitely a strong foundation to begin with. And with former Series champion David Green as a mentor, the potential for partial success was there. By this time, Danica Patrick was still driving full-time in the Nationwide Series for Junior Motorsports with plans to move up to Cup the following season. But in parts of the fan base's mind, perhaps the second female to land in the Cup Series with Danica Patrick could be Johanna Long. 19-year-old Johanna Long in her Daytona debut in the Nationwide Series. She's in the hunt for a good finish. Really impressed by Johanna Long. I mean, she's a good little race car driver. I've seen progress from her all year long. Speaking of Johanna, we're checking a tweet by Jeff Burton. Here it is. Deserves a shot in a top 10 card. You know, whenever she goes racing, she runs well. She's got speed. She's been able to qualify fast at some races. Uh, and then, you know, she's been able to go back in her late model car and be very competitive. And those things, to me, means that she can do it. They've had some great runs. I, I remember Richmond. You know, she's running up in the top five with us and, and really aggressive, really smooth, and can keep going and, and pushing as hard as she can. So I think she's gaining a lot of respect doing that. Now, Johanna Long getting by Denny Hamlin. I believe that puts her in fifth. Being able to pass a Cup Series regular such as Danny Hamlin in Joe Gibbs Racing Equipment, as well as competing with the other Megabuck teams with a small team like ML Motorsports was absolutely insane to watch at the time. But it wasn't just a flash in the pan run. Throughout the entirety of the 2012 season, you saw glimpses of potential on multiple occasions. I want to give a shout out to Johanna Long. Johanna has just gotten around Ryan Scott. She's running on the lead lap. There's only 11 cars on the lead lap, and she is in 10th. Every time I see her run, she does something that impresses me, something that sticks with me, and mile and a half tracks have been her weakness. She's dedicated herself to getting better at this type of track, and she needs to because it's the meat of the schedule, and boy, she's doing it today. This team uh, faced in nearby Warsaw, Indiana, and so this is almost like a home game for her. And she tested earlier this week in Nashville with Austin Dillon and the three team, and they were working specifically on the mile and a half program. It looks like they did some good work. Nothing motivates you more than to have another driver get in your car and go faster. And that's what I heard happened. The problem with these runs is that they were never sustained. Whether it was equipment issues, or her equipment was simply just not good enough to stay up inside the top 10, or getting caught up in other drivers' mess. At the end of the day, it would always be something. There's what's left of Johanna Long's car. From Austin Dillon's onboard, we'll give an idea of what happened. Yeah, see that tire just let go. Getting down into the corner, hard hit as she said. Tough break for Johanna. She had finished 12th back at Kentucky, her best run on a mile and a half, and she had a great run going today, but the end result right there on the hook. Oh, there it is, Johanna Long. It's up close on the back stretch. That's why we couldn't see it from our position. We're blocked from that in a tough way for her to end her season. Might be right, Andy. Keep an eye on the impact. Wow. That's a scary wow. lick right there. Oh. You see all those parts flying off the car? Boy, you're right. Uh -oh. Up trouble, Johanna Long, Jamie Dick, 55, and more. Yeah, Sam Hornish involved in that also, I believe. I think he'll have some front end damage. 99, Alex Bowman. I wonder just how slick that racetrack is coming off for. Almost like there was something on the track, or actually they could have been just a little bit high coming off that corner. 
Her 41 starts from 2012 to 2013 resulted in zero top 10s, but she was damn close on multiple occasions. She had an average finish of 23.4 during this time span, and for someone who didn't run in every single race, that's actually pretty impressive. Yes, I also forgot to add to the fact, she never ran a full-time season ever in her NASCAR career. It really makes you think what could have been. Even with a full-time schedule with ML Motorsports, I'm sure she was bound to get a top 10 eventually. Unfortunately, after 2013, she never made multiple starts in NASCAR again. Sure, she had a one-off deal with Obika Racing, but Obika Racing, as we all know, is different levels of garbage. After ML Motorsports folded, that was basically the end of Johanna Long's NASCAR NASCAR career, all by the age of 21. It's really a shame that her career didn't progress more. She clearly showed flashes of potential with a small team like this, and no Megabuck team ever came calling. Just imagine after Danica Patrick's departure from Junior Motorsports, if Johanna Long had gotten the opportunity to drive for Junior Motorsports in 2013. Today she's married to Kyle Busch Motorsports engineer Hunter Robbins, and the couple have two children, and she's known formally as Johanna Robbins now. Even though though the opportunities didn't come along and her career didn't progress as many in the fanbase had hoped, her talent was still undeniable. Being able to take mediocre equipment up inside the top 10 and top 5 is mighty impressive, which is why in the case of Johanna Long, she is without a doubt not a bust at all. And once again, that'll do it for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.